What's up, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of The Sit Down. As always, if you enjoy this video, please make sure you hit that like button and let me know what you think of today's discussion in the comment section below. If you're new around here, you just haven't done it yet. Are you living on a rock and seeing this video for the first time? I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit that subscribe button below now so you never miss another sit down video. I know it's been a little bit of time since I've dropped a video on this channel. Several months ago, I was demonetized on the platform, but we're back. And I'm excited. I'm going to drop videos here and on my other channel regularly to make sure you never miss one by hitting that subscribe button. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get in to another very interesting organized crime topic. And when we hear the name John Gotti, sometimes you don't generally hear it without the name Sammy Gravano. We know. Sammy the Bull Gravano put away people like John Gotti after he decided to cooperate against the Dapper Don. We also know that Sammy the Bull Gravano would testify against other high-level crime bosses, including Colombo boss Vic Arena, as well as Genovese heavyweight and boss Vincent Giganti. However, who else did Sammy testify against? Today, we're going to delve into 10 mobsters and many others that Sammy put away. The story of Gravano versus the Mafia. Next, on the sit-down. Now, obviously, as I said, John Gotti is the pick of the litter when it comes to individuals that went to prison because of Sammy Gravano. And I want to make this very clear from the beginning. All of these people are criminals. And in the end... They all went to prison. Yes, one of them was because of Sammy Gravano, but the other was because they were generally depraved sociopaths who belonged in prison. However, generally, there's a reason for it. The first person I want to delve into is Pasquale Patsy Conti. Now, Pasquale Conti was a gigantic earner for the Gambino crime family, and had been around the mafia for decades. He would ultimately become a captain in the family. Now, Patsy Conti made a lot of his money in the drug trade. In fact, he was the leader of the Sicilian faction of the Gambino crime family operating out of Queens and Brooklyn. Now, Patsy Conti would use the money that he made in illicit business and get into legitimate business. He was the head of a very large supermarket chain called Taps Supermarkets, as well as Key Foods. Now, for Patsy Conti, uh, he had a bunch of people under his control. And in 1990, the Gambino crime family, most notably John Gotti, felt he had a problem. Gotti believed he had an issue with a certain person called Louis De Bono. Now, Patsy Conti and Sammy Gravano were quite close in the streets. They knew each other. In fact, they were the officiants of the making ceremony of both John Gotti Jr. and Mikey Scars Di Leonardo. Not a lot of people realize that John Gotti Sr. was not the officiant in that. It was actually Patsy Conti and Sammy Gravano. Now, for John Gotti, in 1990, he believed he had a problem with a person in Conti's crew called Louis De Bono. So he voiced some of his concerns about De Bono, according to Sammy the Bull Gravano. Once Sammy cooperated, John Gleason would begin uh, badgering Sammy about uh, Louis De Bono. At one point, Gleason would state, did John make any complaints to you? Gravano would respond, he was dealing with Louis. Louis was doing the same thing making appointments with him and not showing. John would tell Patsy to meet with him. The meeting was set up and he wouldn't show again. Gleason responds, did John tell you this? Gravano would respond, yes. Gleason would then say, did there come a point when he told you whether he had a solution to the problem? Gravano would then state, I believe he became frustrated and eventually said he was going to kill him, referring to John wanting to kill DeBono. Gleason, do you believe that or do you just remember that happening? Gravano, I remember that happening. Gleason would say then, do you recall when for the first time he told you that would happen? Gravano, not exactly the dates. Gleason, did he tell you about anyone 
or anything about who was going to do it. Gravano would then state he was going to give it to Patsy Conti and that crew. Gleason. Patsy was the captain of that crew. Gravano, yes. Gleason. When you say give it to them, what do you mean? Gravano would respond, he was going to order Patsy Conti to kill him. Now, for Patsy Conti, this was incredibly bad due to the fact that this is a conspiracy to commit murder and he was lumped into it. Now, for Patsy Conti, Sammy the Bull Gravano was very destructive to him as well, but it didn't help that Patsy's own brother, Anthony, would also cooperate against his brother. In the end, Patsy Conti would plead guilty and be sentenced to seven and a half years in federal prison. Now, Sammy Gravano, as we know, has stated, uh, and it has been stated about him, that he's been involved in 19 murders. I understand that he did not pull the trigger in all of those murders, but he was around or ordered the murders. One of the more lesser known is of a person called Francesco Oliveri. Now that would occur in and around the late eighties and the group of five that I'm about to name all went to prison exclusively off the testimony of Sammy, the bull Gravano. They would include Giuseppe and Giovanni Gambino, AKA Joe and John Gambino, Lorenzo Menino, Robert, Bobby Cabert, Basaccia, and Ozzy Stantini. Now, according to Sammy the Bull Gravano, he would give step-by-step -step instructions on A, why Mr. Oliveri was killed, and B, how it happened. According to what we know, Mr. Oliveri got into some sort of argument with a person called Giuseppe Gambino, not the one listed here. He was a nephew to John Gambino, and Gambino uh, was incensed that the kid was killed. So he went to John Gotti to have Oliveri killed. And John Gotti, it said, instructed Gravano to put the hit team in motion. Now, Gravano would state by giving step-by-step -step instructions that a week before the murder, um, they had went to kind of look into this guy, see what he did on a routine basis, and that there would be uh, multiple cars involved, walkie-talkies, and guns. On May 3rd, 1988, Mr. Gravano would claim that um, they assembled before dawn in Brooklyn. He then said that he and Mr. Menino stationed themselves near the Oliveri home in one stolen car, and the three other men stayed in the second stolen car with a legitimate car parked a flew, few blocks away. According to Gravano, he would say in the Oliveri murder that he was, quote, the backup shooter as well as the supervisor. He would then add that he notified the others by walkie-talkie when Mr. Menino saw Mr. Oliveri coming out of the home. He then stated Bobby Cabert Masaccia ran out and shot him five times. He would then say after the shooting, they then sped away in the two stolen cars, then all switched to the legitimate car and drove back to Brooklyn. Now, for all the people involved, this stuff was pretty straightforward. Menino was involved, the Gambinos were involved, and Stantini and Basaccia were the shooters. The main shooter was Robert Basaccia. He had already had gotten 27 years in a state case, but this case did him in. He would die in prison in the 2000s. Now, for Ozzy Stantini, um, he, unlike the Gambinos and Menino, decided not to take a plea. He was initially given a plea deal, but they both rejected the deal in terms of Basaccia and Stantini. Now, for Stantini, this was bad because he would end up doing significantly more time than the others. Stantini was released from federal prison in 2017. John and Giuseppe Gambino were both given 15 years in plea deals. Lorenzo Menino would get 15 years. Now, obviously, uh, one of the only individuals still around as far as in the mob currently, allegedly, is Lorenzo Menino, who many people believe is the current boss of the Gambino crime family. These five were did in 
gotten one murder conspiracy of essentially a citizen who got in too deep with killing someone he shouldn't have. The next individual we're going to get into that was ripe from the wrath of Sammy Gravano is, in my estimation, one of the most powerful people and most underrated people ever associated with the mafia, James Jimmy Brown failure. Now, we have to realize that Jimmy Brown failure goes back in the mafia to the 50s. He was initially a driver for Carlo Gambino, and at one point, essentially controlled Jimmy Brown, the entire garbage industry in New York. You talk about another incredibly big earner for the mafia. At one point, John Gotti was on record stating that Jimmy Brown turned the garbage industry into a candy store. That's how much money this guy was making. He was boss material and was very trusted. In fact, when John Gotti went away in the early 90s, he had the understanding that he needed to make Jimmy Brown happy. He had a lot of sway over the family. He was very powerful. I mentioned he was connected to Carlo. He was with the Paul regime. Um, you had to get his respect, and you had to get his um, kind of thought on things, and that's one of the reasons he was named to the panel uh, in the 90s. Now, for Jimmy Brown, his involvement in relation to Sammy Gravano was particularly bad for him. Understand that. He had been around the mafia since the 50s, but had never went to prison. Jimmy Brown was incredibly smart with not speaking in public. There had been a discussion at one point by the federal government that for six months, they bugged the home of Paul Castellano and didn't really get Jimmy Brown to speak even one word. That's how careful Jimmy Brown was, though the issue presented itself in the late 80s, that a member of Jimmy Brown's crew, a person called Tommy Sparrow Spinelli, had spoken to a grand jury. And in the mob world, that is a no-no. It was put in motion that Tommy Sparrow had to go. And at that point, remember, Sammy's a high-ranking member of the family. He's involved in a murder conspiracy. Uh, the message is put in motion. Also involved in the hit, was said to be Danny Marino, who went to prison over this. He initially in the family came up under Jimmy Brown. Also involved was a person said to be the shooter, Louis Louis Fats Astuto. Now, if you know anything about Astuto, he came up under Jimmy Brown. He was essentially the protege to Jimmy Brown in the Gambino family. And Louis Astuto handled certain business that needed to be taken care of for Jimmy Brown failure. All of these individuals were very close to Jimmy Brown. In the end, they would all plead guilty to murder conspiracy. And in Jimmy Brown's world, he would receive seven years in federal prison in 1994. I had heard from multiple people that for the entire time Jimmy Brown was in prison, he constantly scoffed at the name Sammy Gravano. And why wouldn't he? Without Gravano, it's probable he wouldn't have been convicted. It would be the first time he would go to prison in his life, and he would die there. Jimmy Brown would die in 1999. Louis Astuto would also go to prison over this, as well as Danny Marina. Now, interestingly enough, Louis Astuto's son, Louis uh, Astuto Jr., is currently alleged to be a reputed member of the mob and was actually jammed up recently in a construction big rigging case alongside his mentor, Frank Frankie Calypso Camuso. And one of the final people I want to get into that is somewhat lesser known, but had been around really longer than any of the people I've discussed. Sammy Gravano would also play a part in putting a father and son in prison that were one of the biggest gambling duos in the Gambino crime family. I'm talking about Ralph, Ralphie Bones Mosca. Now, Ralphie Mosca uh, was originally from the Bronx, but operated in and out of Queens. Ralphie Bones Mosca came up under the tutelage in the Anastasia crime family. He was made way back in the 50s alongside people like Jimmy Brown. It was said Rafi Bones actually came up under Bronx Gambino heavyweight Frankie Scalish. 
Um, and he would move around in, in certain um, groups. Rafi Bones was a huge gambler, and that was really up until uh, his time, um, you know, in his 80s, really. Um, he was huge bookie. Uh, he was also notably involved in the ILA, a.k.a. the International Longshoremen's Association Union, as well as the Carpenters Union. It was also said that Rafi Bones' Mosca was – kind of the conduit to the Greek mob in and around Astoria, Queens, and held sway over those groups uh, and took a piece of whatever they were making. Ralphie Bones was very dialed in and always was very close and seen in the company of both John Gotti and Peter Gotti. Now, what's interesting about Ralphie Bones Mosca is his son, Peter Mosca, was made the same night as John Gotti in the seventies. So kind of an interesting little twist to this in 1992, Rafi Mosca uh, would uh, plead guilty and be sentenced to three years of house arrest. After he alongside his son and a man called Joseph Passanati were arrested on racketeering and gambling charges. Keep in mind, Ralph Mosca was born in 1910 and in 1992, was well into his 80s. He was very old, and he was only given house arrest due to his poor health and old age. Ralph Mosca would die in 1999 at the age of 89. His son, Peter Mosca, is still alive and 90 years old. It is not clear what he does now. My guess is he's just living out the rest of his life in relative anonymity. It's not just these 10 individuals that Sammy Gravano put in prison. He would also testify and put in prison Domenico Dom Cefalu, the one-time alleged boss of the Gambino family, Tommy Gambino, the son of Carlo Gambino, Genovese underboss Venero, Benny Eggs, Mangano. We would know also that he would testify in the trials of Chin Giganti. He would also put away the Calvacanti boss Giovanni John Riggi, as well as associates like Barry, Barry Nichols, Nikilo. Now, these were all, as far as Riggi and Nikilo, this was for the conspiracy to kill. The Calvacanti crime family soldier, Gaetano Corky Vastola. In the end, these are all the individuals that Mr. Gravano put away. Keep in mind, a lot of big names, Gotti, Arena, Lacasio, But they're also corrupt detectives, jurors that fixed trials, as well as union officials. A lot of people went to prison because of Sammy Gravano. He's now the only one on YouTube talking about it. Most of the people we discuss today are dead. Some are alive. But we don't know exactly a lot of the time who he actually put away. The list is long and vast. We'll see you next week here on The Sit Down.